Hello everybody, welcome to another PestEd training program. Uh, this program is going to be on a granular application on turf. We have a product out here called Spectricide. Uh, we don't endorse it or we don't not endorse it, it just happens to be a product that we can use today to show you how to measure and apply granular insecticides to a lawn. Now you can, this particular label is also labeled for household ants. So it has a bandwidth application you can put around a property if you want. But today we're going to focus on a couple of things. Let's just look at what the manufacturer of this product is telling us right off the bat. Um, it treats up to 25,000 square feet. So that's about a half an acre. And they're claiming it's 2.5 times more coverage than standard 10,000 square foot bags. I don't know what a 10,000 square foot bag standard is or what they're talking about. Uh, they're claiming it kills up to 100 plus insects. That's more insects than we need. I don't really know 100 insects in the turf. However, right off the bat we know it's a broad label. It's a broad spectrum label for insects. So pretty much any insect you're going to try to control will be controlled with a product like this. There's a money back guarantee. There's some nice pictures on the label. Chinch bugs, grubs, it doesn't tell us what kind, but it just says grubs. Ants, fleas, mole crickets, sob webworms, kills insects above and below ground. Once treated area has been watered and is dry, children and pets can return. So after reading this label, which you have to do in order to use this product, uh, it says on the label you have to read the complete label before using it. I took the time to read the label and an interesting thing is once you put the product out, until you water it, you can't allow anybody on the lawn the way the label's written. Even if it's going to rain in a day or so and that's going to water it in, it says you have to water it. So that's something to keep in mind on this particular product. Uh, the active ingredient is gamma cyhalothrin, 0.05%. So let's just take a look at packaging. All the stuff you need to know in English and in Spanish is on the back. Um, the manufacturer claims this is a reusable or rather resealable bag. It's for outdoor use around the home only. Okay, and I guess when they say home, they're talking about home being lawn and the structure. So we have a label, or excuse me, we have scissors here, and we're gonna cut it right. You wanna get a shot on that? There's a specific spot they want you to cut it because down here is the resealable part. So we don't wanna cut below the resealable part. So I'm gonna cut a little bit. Hopefully I won't. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna take, I'm just gonna take half of it off. That way if I spill it, I don't spill as much as fast. Okay, now, now that it's open, it's technically in use. So if you're gonna do a commercial application with this product, uh, you have to check with your state because now it's open, it's in use, you may need a license to apply this commercially or work under someone else's license. Now a homeowner with a general use pesticide wouldn't have to worry about that so much. Um, but if you're going to someone else's property, now you fall under all the commercial use regulations for your state. So I have nitrile gloves I like to use because uh, there's going to be dust in there. And I'm allergic to latex, so I always make sure when I buy rubber gloves that I buy the nitrile ones and that I have a left and a right. So one of the things here, I'm going to take this paperweight off, see if, I'm going to refer to this label briefly every once in a while, I want to point out a couple things. It says if you broadcast it, use a spreader, but let's get right down to the section here that talks about using it. It says, step one, determine the size of the job, measure the area to be treated. So if you don't measure the area to be treated, you're violating the label. Now, unless you already know the area to be treated, maybe you've been to this house before, this place before, 
and you know you've got 2,000 square feet or 500 square feet, whatever it is. So then it's okay, but otherwise, you're responsible as the applicator to measure the area to be treated. And we're gonna do that for you. Use spreader setting chart, which is really nice. They actually put a chart here for all the common spreaders that are out there that you would buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or from your distributor. And uh, we happen to pick up one just for this. I can't find it on here. I know it's on, there it is. It's made by Scott's, it's called the Edge Guard. So it's gonna have settings. This label is telling me exactly what setting to put it at to have the proper dosage rate, which is great. We're still gonna test that though. We're gonna make sure that this label and the spreader that this label says to use for a certain dosage rate at a certain setting is accurate. We're gonna do a little consumer advocacy here. Um, so where are we at? This particular label tells us that we have to use, or we can use, up to 0.8 pounds per 1,000 square feet. 0.8 pounds per 1,000 square feet, so not quite a pound. How do we know? Do we just put it in our... Well, actually, if we had a spreader that we've used it over and over and we've done this 100 times, we know what 0.8 pounds is by looking at our spreader. But I've never used this product, and I've never used this spreader that I have here that we're going to pull up in a second. So I have to start totally from a level of ignorance. I don't know what 0.8 pounds is or what it even begins to look like. Now, this label says it's 20 pounds. So I gotta, I have to use 0.8 pounds. So I'm gonna use this very small but handy scale. Uh, what we do is, we turn it on, and I'm gonna use this little, I guess it's plastic. And that tells me this little plastic bowl weighs 5.2 ounces. So I could weigh my 0.8 pounds and take out the 5.2 ounces. But I'm gonna, I have a little option here for tear and I'm gonna set it to zero. So now whatever I put in there, it's not going to count the weight of the bowl. It's just gonna count the weight of the insecticide. So I'm gonna try to do this without spilling any. Um, the label doesn't have any requirements for PPE, you know, respirator, glasses, that sort of thing. But you wanna be careful there's no wind today, which is great. Uh, there's a lot of dust in these, and that's pesticide dust, along with whatever uh, matrix they've put this on, whether it's corn cob, ceramic, who knows, I don't know. But let's, uh, hey, while we're here, let's see if we can reseal it. The reseal works. So, so far, no false advertising. Yeah, resealed it nice. We'll open it back up. And come and take a shot of this. Whew. Now this is not a bait. This is a granular impregnated on, again, it could be corn cobs ground up. They use all different kinds of things and they soak them in the pesticide. Now when, when you put this out, the pesticide slowly gets released as moisture hits the matrix that it's on but there's different sizes it's fairly consistent but again you'll have powders and all that sort of thing in here so let's pick this up carefully and we wanna use 0.8 pounds right so let's see what this does I'm gonna go really slow and I don't know if you can get a shot Ooh. What is 0.8 pounds? 12.8 ounces. Thank you. I have help. 12.8 ounces. Getting close. Whoa, went over. Okay. So there's no way you're going to do this and not get some pesticide. You know, it sticks. It uh, These things adhere through static to the plastic, so... We're going to take some of this all out. I don't know exactly how much, but I'm going to guess about that much. 
and we'll put it back on. 12.6. What did you say about 12.8 or 12.6? 12.8. 12 12.8. So we're just under. We're 0.2 ounces under. I think we'll. We'll. Well, maybe we should be 100% accurate. It's not nice to be not 100% accurate. So let's see how accurate we have to be. 12.7, 12.8. It was only about another tablespoon or so. So now we have our pesticide measured out. I'm going to reseal this and set it on the ground because I don't want this to fall off and have a spill issue. Even though we're here on grass, it's just a pain in the neck to clean up. There we go. Now I'm going to set this here. And we've got the proper amount. So. 1,000 square feet. This is how much we need to use. It's actually quite a bit. There's a, there's a lot, of, lot of material here. Now, maybe in your mind you don't know exactly what 1,000 square feet is. So we're going to take some time right now, and we're going to go measure 1,000 square feet for you and show you. And then we're actually going to do an application because we have a lot of those insects that were on the label on this section of the lawn over here. We have ants. We have some grubs. Uh, so let's go to that section now. We'll do some measurements. Okay, welcome back. We're going to show you now how to measure what a thousand square feet is. So in your mind, you'll understand the kind of area you have for the particular type of pesticide that you're using. There are just any label you're going to use, uh, especially a granular label, any granular label you use on a turf, is going to, or even around the outside of a lawn, is going to have a dosage rate. You know, like when the doctor says, take two aspirin every four hours. That's a dosage rate. So most of the labels will say, they'll always give you something like one pound per thousand square feet or 0.5 ounces per thousand square feet. You know, they're all different, uh, but you have to read every label. But if you don't know what a thousand square feet is, then you're going to have a difficult time following that particular regulation. So let's show you what a thousand square feet is. It's pretty simple. Um, we'll start with this big hammer. I'm going to pound this all the way into the ground so it's only sticking up about one inch. Maybe three feet. Uh, we'll leave it right here. Okay, so we have to do ten by 100. Cameraman, can you put your foot on that for me? Mm-hmm. Right there is good. Thank you. So we got 10. Where's 10? 10's right up there. 10 feet is right there. Let me get another one. I think you'll be amazed how big a thousand square feet really is and how little pesticide you need for a thousand square feet. So we got our 10. Keep your foot on that, okay? Thank you. And then uh, I'm going to take some more stakes down this way and let's go a hundred square, a hundred feet. We're probably there right about now. No, 22, 22, five times, okay. Let's keep going. 40, 10 by 40, 400 square feet. Some of those labels say five ounces. No, half an ounce or an ounce per 100, no, 1,000 square feet. This is only 400 square feet. Ten by eighty, eight hundred square feet. Wait a minute. Ninety.
Not yet, though, but we have 100 feet long. Now we have to go another 10 feet wide. I'm going to walk it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this is 10 by 100. So we've got 1,000 square feet now. There's some ant baits out there that say you should only use 0.4 ounces per 1,000 square feet. That's about a cap full, or a figure the size of a golf ball. There's some other products that say you're going to use uh, we were just looking at one yesterday. It says 0.8 pounds, which is like 12.8 ounces per thousand square feet. And that's about the amount that would fit in a soda can, something like that. So if you're using more than that, really think about what you're doing. And this is just to kind of give you an idea of what a thousand square feet is. Okay, I did want to point out one thing that... Um, around about that spectricide product they have a broadcast section of the label but they also have a section for ants and it said or says you can use a half a teaspoon around each ant hill now it doesn't tell you what kind of ant though so maybe it's a big mound maybe it's a little mound although they do have some uh they did mention in here Come on, get a close look on this. It says season long control against ants. And then there's an asterisk. So now we have to find out where's the asterisk. Asterisks are always important. So if you look around here on this label, oh, it's caution, so it's the lowest hazard level um, you can have for a signal word. It says, though, season long control against ants, excluding harvester and pharaoh ants. So you don't want to use this for pharaoh ants or harvester ants. They do have some ants listed here. Argentine, Carpenter, Southern Field, Allegheny Mound, Cornfield, Honey, Pavement, Red Imported. So you ladies and gentlemen who live down south, you can use this type of product with this active ingredient for those nasty Red Imported fire ants. Pyramid, black turf, white-footed, crazy ants, ghost ants, uh, lots of different ants. So, how do we apply it? Well, I didn't want to drive anywhere, so I called, or I placed this order on Amazon for a spreader. Just picked any old spreader. I mean, this seemed like a decent one. Um, it's not something you're going to use if you own a golf course or if you're doing sports fields. I mean, you're going to need something really big. Although, if maybe for little custom applications around those areas or if you have a golf course and you're just going to do a small spot, you don't want to get the, all the equipment out, load up your hopper, you can use something little like this. You'll notice this is the box it came in. It didn't come with any instructions. I'm not too good mechanical. So this is probably really good for people who've never done this before. <laughs> I'm going to try to put this together. It looks like it's mostly together. There is a little safety. Now I got yellow jackets. What do they want? Okay. So here's a little safety. Take a look at that. There's a guy there. They want you to throw this in the garbage. It's plastic. It's probably recyclable. So we'll try that. These were some kind of little safety things. If they sent instructions with it, it would have been nice, and I'd know what those are actually for. I do not. Um, I know that somewhere in here there's a handle. And it should be here. And yet, I don't see it. It's attached to the bottom wheels. This is the handle? Mm-hmm. So we have to loosen these things up? It's tied up. I just so happen to have a way to stop that. There we go. 
keep all plastic in one area. It's still not coming up. Ah, <laughs> ah look at that. All right. Now it looks like we just crank these little knobs down. Again, this is like not a what I would consider a commercial spreader. It's just a little lightweight thing someone used around the house. But the concepts of granular insecticide applications and baiting are the same regardless of what spreader you're using. So we've got this. Look, we have an on-off edge guard. This thing shoots in different directions, so we're going to leave it leave it on for now. Now come on over here and take a look. It does give you some instructions. I guess they feel they don't have to send the instructions in because your average person can figure out how to do this. But I'm a little slow sometimes, so it takes me a while. We got this little thing here, it spins around. This is, this is going to keep your pesticide from clumping. And... Ah! This, this kind of neat. So this is on a spring, and let's take a look down here. This is gonna open it up, and this is gonna spin around so it pushes the pesticide or allows it to not clump and go down. Now, look at that edge guard. See that orange thing in there? See what that does? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So maybe you only wanna shoot on one side. Now it'll only shoot halfway over to one side, which is kind of nice. There's been a lot of times, especially if you're going around a house, where you don't want to shoot out 10 feet away from the house or five feet away from the house. You just want to do a little band next to the house. So that's actually a pretty cool uh, innovation by Scott's, the company that makes this one. That's why they call it the Scott's Edge Guard. Um, so let's get back in here. They're telling us what to do. They say, first, fill the spreader, choose the spreader setting, Apply the product, and step four, sweep stray particles back into the lawn area. So over the years, there's a lot of talk about pyrethroid pesticides getting into the water and into the ground, so much so that um, several years back, the EPA has made it so that uh, with liquid applications, people used to power wash entire houses. So you would come to this, this garage here and let's say you wanted to control cluster flies, you would just spray the whole garage with a liquid application. But now they don't let you do that. They only let you, most labels let you go up three feet and or treat the soffits. If you wanted to do this whole wall, you'd literally have to go underneath every single one of those pieces of siding because that would be a crack and crevice application. But you can't broadcast spray anymore because of environmental concerns. And that's why Scott's is pointing out that if some of this gets on a sidewalk, you don't leave it on the sidewalk. You sweep it off when you're all done. Because it's just going to run off and, you know, depending on the area, who knows where it's going to go. This particular product that we're using, the labels under there, it does have a restriction. And I don't need to hold this up. What's wrong with me? I think I have the label over here. I do. So the restriction had to do with water. And water is a big concern for everybody. So let's find that little section. Here we go. Well, the, the other thing I want to point out, this product which is in here says, keep children and pets off treated area until product has been watered in and lawn is dry. So again, if you're going to use this product, and it's not just this product this Spectricide makes, it, there's a lot of granular labels, insecticide labels, that say on them, water in immediately after application. So you cannot just come to the house and put them out and leave and go to your next stop. They have to be watered in. If you want to follow the label correctly, and I know you all do. Now the other section says here, in New York State, this product may not be applied to lawns within 100 feet of a coastal marsh, meaning down by the ocean, right? Or stream that drains directly into a coastal marsh. So people living along the coast, you know, up and down the east and west coast 
Well, actually, this would just be in New York State. Uh, the coast of New York State, which there's a lot of coasts, Long Island and um, the city, that area, you cannot apply this within 100 feet. There's a big concern of runoff and leaching, that sort of thing. So, again, back to the Spectricide label. They do have a separate section just for ant mounds. And it says a half a teaspoon for, per mound, so about that much. Now I've just used this measuring device, and according to this label, I can never use it again now for any food purpose. You don't usually see that on a label, but they actually point out here, and I will find it. Food utensils, such as spoons or measuring cups, must not be used for food pur purposes after use in measuring pesticides. So this is now forever. Well, you would think, you know, if you seriously wash that with bleach or ammonia, that there couldn't be pesticide on it still. But the label says it doesn't matter what I think, it matters what they think and what the EPA approves. So for the rest of my life, I have to get new ones of these when I do measuring for my house. Back to this, the, this particular uh, product has a nice chart on it, and I, can you get a shot of this a little bit? Maybe not, but if you just get the shape, all of the, this section of the label is all about all the different uh, spreaders that you can buy and what the rates are, okay? And now, so because of that, I technically can go by what this manufacturer says the settings are for granular application. I don't have to measure out a thousand square feet. It'll tell me um, how much to use. In other words, this label says 0.8 pounds per thousand square feet. This machine is going to put out 0.8 pounds per 1,000 square feet if I use the proper setting. And the proper setting for a Scott's edge guard at 0.8 pounds per 1,000 square feet is two and a half two and a half. So we're down to here. Two and a half. Let's see if we can see. In, oh, look. All right. So now watch the width here. The, the, the gap that's going to open up, two and a half is very small. See how I can, now I'm going to set it up to five. You'll see how it opens up. Then I'm going to move it up to 10. And that moves up, then we go all the way up to 15, and that's just going to dump stuff all the way up. You wouldn't want to use a fine granular. I'm not sure what you'd ever use 15 for. Um, maybe marbles, <laughs> something pretty big. But we're going to put it back down to two and a half for our purposes. And that's it. Not much space. So this is going to come out really tiny. And you can see that thing rolls around. That stops it from getting all plugged up. Maybe sometimes it's moist, you know, the air's moist, a lot of humidity, or wherever you stored that product, it might have some humidity in it if you left the bag open. That's going to help break it up. So let's take our little machine and go over to our thousand square feet and see what this thing does, okay? Before we actually start using the spreader, I did want to point out one thing that the, the manufacturer of the pesticide here says. They put a little note in here. I mean, this is small print. You really got to go in there. At my age, you need a magnifying glass, but I blew this up. Uh, the spreader settings listed above are approximate. Accurately weigh a few pounds into your spreader and apply to a measured area. So they're actually telling us that what we're doing, mosquitoes are biting me all over. Well, what we're doing is required not just a good idea because the label says it doesn't say you should or you may or if you choose to it says accurately weigh a few pounds into your spreader and apply to a measured area then adjust spreader settings if necessary in order to ensure correct rate of application so take a look at the products you're using there's hundreds of them out there if it says something like that you really need to know exactly how much you're putting out per thousand square feet. You have to calibrate your spreader. That's what they're saying. You have to calibrate it. And this is one way to do it. So we're going to go over and use it now. 
Now, just to give you an idea of how much, <laughs> even these inexpensive little spreaders, the technology has changed, the awareness of pesticide use in the United States and around the world has really gone up a lot of levels. Now, this particular unit here is not made to be pushed. That Scotch unit is made to be pushed. This one is made to be pulled behind, you know, a small lawn tractor or something. Uh, but if you'll notice, come on over here, I'll show you. We'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison. This one, and I've used this for fertilizer a lot. The problem with this one is, here's your settings, right? Once you set your setting, let's say that opens and closes that. As soon as you pour your pesticide in there, it starts coming out immediately. So you have to be, if you're treating the lawn, you gotta be on the lawn, and as soon as you get that pesticide in there, there's no like open and close, open and close. I mean, cause you're driving a tractor, right? You can't reach around and grab that. So you gotta kinda put the stuff in there, have it closed, put your product in there, open it up, jump on the tractor and go. At least that's the only way I know how to do it. Um, it has a similar, little cotter key in there to break up the clumps and you can see it's wheel driven both of them are wheel driven so they go the faster you go the faster this spins and it keeps a uniform rate but I want to point the nice thing about this particular one you'll notice see that's closed this was good thinking um, on the engineer designers side uh, I can have product in there and it's not going to leak out all I have to, when I want to use it, I pull this lever forward, and then it opens up the gap, okay? So, that's just something to show you. Uh, these are inexpensive, you know, $50, $70. This one's 15 years old. You can see it's all rusting out. Um, the wheels are solid, but it's just used for putting fertilizer out around the property. And it, it serves its purpose. It's not something you're going to use. You know, on an 18-hole golf course, obviously, but it does serve its purpose. It's inexpensive, it's easy to use, it's very portable. Now, let's come back to our 1,000 square feet. So we have 1,000 square feet. You got a shot of that? Down by those two poles. And let's put our product in. So we've weighed out. 0.8 ounces. The nice thing about this product is there is a range you can use. This is the minimum they suggest, point, no, 0.8 pounds, excuse me, 0.8 pounds per thousand square feet, but it goes up to 1.2 or 1.5. It depends on the particular insect you want to control, okay? But we have a lot of different insects here from ants to grubs. So we're going to use the lowest rate and this is really just to see how this machine works, all right? See how our spreader is calibrated. Remember the manufacturer, now come in and take a look. Some of you may think, wow, 1,000 square feet. Okay, so that's a pretty big area. And then you fill up your hopper to the top and you keep going back and forth. But that's all the manufacturer of this product, that's all they're saying that you should use. That's 0.8 pounds right there. The nice thing is it's not leaking out on the ground, which I think is a great, this is a good little innovation. Um, we're going to take the edge guard off because we don't want it shooting in one direction. We want it to broadcast out, okay? So you can go ahead and get in front of me or move around wherever you want to move around. I'm just going to start walking and I'm going to count, kind of count to myself. Is anything coming out? Yeah. No, it's not. No. It's not coming out at all. Because there's a safety feature here. Mm. This little thing, I got to pull this. Remember? Mm -hmm. There's a like a, there's a little ledge there, uh, a flat piece of plastic that holds it shut. So we'll come back and start again. Okay. So now I'm going to pull the lever and then I'm going to start going. So now we're going to go 1,000 square feet. Is anything coming out? Yes. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Yep. Because I can't. Oh, I see. Very little. Look at that. So it really doesn't matter if I run or I walk because it's only going to dispense at the rate of the wheel turning. Is 
is kind of a pain in the neck. I think I'll use a tractor the next time. Still about half of it in there. I'm tempted to open the throttle up on this. Now come over here and take a look. So this is when, you, when you're dealing with over-the-counter uh, machinery like this and not, not a commercial. See how that's back up a little? See how that's spinning? But it's really not knocking any in the crack anymore. So you have to shake it a little. We have a little bit left in the bottom. I'm just gonna dump it out. So that's, I don't know how long that took me. I didn't measure the time. About two minutes maybe. Uh, we can actually look on this video later and find out exactly how long it was. But that's gonna give you an idea of what 0.8 pounds is, um, which is about a half a pound, right? And over a thousand square foot area about two minutes with this kind of thing. Now, if you have, if you you wouldn't use this, obviously we said before, to do massive amounts like a football field or something. But the reason that we're showing you this, one of the reasons, other than the law and following the label, um, is that pesticides are expensive. You know, they're part of your profit and loss statement. So as part of your business that you're running, you want to think about your profit and loss statement. And if you don't calibrate your equipment, you're going to use twice, five times, ten times more products than you need. And that's going to have a bottom line impact. So this is why you need to calibrate your equipment, whatever it is. Even if, if it's a little inexpensive thing like this, you know, um, or you have a $5,000 piece of equipment. Either way, it's got to be calibrated, and you have to know how much you're using to follow the label and to save you money and be effective. Okay, so we've just applied uh, a label rate amount of product in this 1,000 square foot section for the control of insects on lawns. Now, the specific product we used said on the label that you must water the insecticide and then let it dry prior to allowing children or pets on the property. So I have to, by law, water this now. And that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> One of the things I noticed, we, before we did this, we checked the weather, it's not gonna rain today. The label also said on this particular product that you have to wait 24 hours or you have to look ahead 24 hours and make sure it's not going to rain within 24 hours it's not going to rain for three days here uh, but we do have to water in the insecticide so we're going to do that right now and it said lightly water so it's that's i guess is up totally up to me what i think lightly is so i'm going to make that call This is likely? I don't know. See, I really don't like when labels say things like that. But I don't know how else they could do it. You know, we could put this on center. This is still lightly. We could put it on jet. It's still lightly. And to be honest with you, this is probably a better setting. Eh, maybe not. I think the idea is not so much that you're, you're not causing the pesticide by lightly watering. You're not causing the pesticide to get activated for the most part. What you're doing is you're, you're taking any dust particles or small particles of pesticide and you're dampening them. 
so they're not going to become airborne. They're going to fall down those little corn cob pieces, what are the bait matrix? Those pieces are going to fall down into the grass, into the turf, so they're not going to be so greatly exposed to people. So we're going to we lightly water this now. If you have a sprinkler system, you could turn on the sprinkler system. You could time it that way. If it's a, the, you could either have it on a timer, or you could, you know, manually activate your sprinkler system. That would suffice just for a few minutes. Again, the label says lightly, so we don't really know what that is, but it's enough to keep the pesticide dust down at least, and cause some of those little granules to fall further down into the turf, so they won't be near people. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Hurley, the owner of Pest Ed. Thank you for watching our videos, and we hope that you subscribe, because we're going to have a lot more videos coming up, and we'd appreciate your input if there's anything you'd like to see.